Okay. Let's see if you can keep an open mind for a few minutes and let's talk about uh, four gentlemen that gave us basically 100% of our current day electrical engineering theory, uh, most of the patents for our current AC systems, and uh, comprise about 95% of current day electrical theory, which of course is the basis for all field theory. Who would these people be? Nikola Tesla. Oliver Heaviside, uh, James Clerk Maxwell, uh, Charles Proteus Steinmetz, a little hunched over guy um, who later became uh, hardcore friends with Thomas Edison, ironically since uh, Charles Proteus Steinmetz really perfected the systems of uh, Nikola Tesla. What did all these people have in common and what was the one thing that they said was wrong? Now J.J. Thomson supposedly discovered uh, the electron. Um, however, it was the case that only when fame and uh, much uh, money and uh, acclamation was uh, weighed upon him did he eventually concede, was forced to basically uh, admit uh, the premise, forward the premise that the electron was a particle. Well, that's not the case. Uh, Oliver Heaviside said that this was a quote-unquote psychosis of current human understanding. It is the case that quantum, i.e. quantity, i.e. atomism, a very, very ancient premise that even predates the ancient Greeks, atomism. And of course, Democritus revived it. That uh, Einstein and his ilk of quantum buffoons have set back understanding of cosmic mechanics at least 100 years in our current supposed modern day world. Um, what is the case that uh, there is no such thing as an electron? Well, what does this mean? Well, obviously, superficially, this sounds absolutely absurd. And uh, that, of course, makes sense. I mean, that powers everything that we have. But what is the case about the electron that the, the four greatest minds in electrical theory and engineering, that no current modern-day physicist or quantum uh, 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 physicist or uh, current electrical engineer would ever dispute these guys? These are the giants of electrical engineering. Why is it that Oliver Heaviside, Nikola Tesla, and I have the quotes below for you, why is it that these gentlemen refuted, including the supposed discoverer of the electron, who said it was a line of uh, dielectric uh, discharge, why did these people say that there's no such thing as electron particle? Well, that's because these people were very, very intelligent and wise. There is no such thing as an electron particle. This forms the basis that Mother Nature is an insane crack core with a giant bag of magical particles, irreducibly small. This is the premise of Democritus all the way back to the ancient Greek atomists and even before them. Quantum, i.e. quantity, i.e. physicalism or existentialism, even on the atomic scale, premises that there are tiny little beads flowing through wires and hovering about in a buzz around an atomic nucleus. I have all the quotes for you below. Is there any evidence to this? No, there's absolutely none. What? No evidence of an electron particle? Absolutely not. What the hell is flowing through wires in an AC system? Well, there's no such thing as a rest mass of an electron. This is a field perturbation. There is no such thing as an electron particle. Wow, that sounds absolutely absurd. We know that there's this crap flowing through a wires that's powering all devices, including the Nikon D750 camera that I'm using right now. Is there any evidence for that? Absolutely none. It's a field perturbation. Well, the giant 800 pound gorilla that sits and shits upon the heads of quantum mechanics and physics is the one word field because field has no quantity. Everything is fields and fields are not particles. There's no such thing as an electron particle. There's no such thing as a rest electron and there's absolutely zero evidence for an electron particle at all. Now if you go to Wikipedia which is one of the most evil corrupt sites on the internet because it is run by uh, consensus and of course it is written by quantum atomists you will see this uh, impossibly low number to the rest mass of an electron. Now, what would account for this, and why would we have a presumed rest mass of an electron? The assumed bullshit of the weight of an electron, by the way, weight is location specific and medium specific. My fat ass in water doesn't weigh anything. My fat ass in intergalactic space doesn't weigh anything. Now, if there's nothing in the universe other than me and the sun, and our immediately come 
say a million miles closer to the sun instantly, I would immediately change weight. Well, how is that possible? It certainly has nothing to do with warpage of space, because space is nothing. It's the absence of inertia. And uh, since uh, instant communication can't travel faster than the speed of light, then exactly how could I change weight instantly? Okay, we know that weight, well, I know anyway, that weight is location specific and is medium specific. So what accounts for the presumed mass of the electron? Well, the presumed weight of the electron is the false narrative of electrostatic impulse imparted from discharge. If you were to believe the notion that there are particles flowing through a million volts, uh, up to 1,000 amperage AC lines, then you're delusional. As is the case through AC lines, if the power goes out to a lightning strike or whatever happens, when the power comes back on, one thing you notice between two AC lines is it will spread apart away from the center of gravity. Of course, gravity I'll discuss later, obviously. So, away from the Earth. It will actually rise away from the Earth. So, actually, actually increase the amperage. Supposedly, the electrons that are flowing through AC lines you would think that they become, wow, really heavy. It would make sense that AC lines would actually drop to the Earth. Why, there's all of a sudden, there's all these particles that are flowing through these wires. Is that the case? No, just the opposite happens. They actually spread apart and away from the Earth. That's the case. This is undeniable. It is irrefutable. If the power goes out and you go outside and you know when it's going to come back on and nobody does that, who goes outside and stares at the power line? When the power comes back on, the AC lines will actually spread apart and away from the center of gravity, or po towards the point of acceleration, as is the case. Gravity is nothing other than dielectric acceleration, so how is this possible? Supposedly, the electron has mass. I mean, would that be the case that if I throw 1,000 amps and 10,000 volts through a wire, that it's going to get heavier? Well, the electron has mass, but obviously adds weight to it. Just the inverse happens just the inverse happens. This has actually been done. Weighing the actual segmental uh, piece of a line that high voltage current passes through. The line actually decreases in weight. Boy, this makes no sense. Apparently trillions and trillions and trillion trillion of electrons are flowing through these AC lines. How come it loses weight? I thought the electron has weight. No, it doesn't. There's no such thing as a zero rest mass electron and the greatest minds that gave you 100% of the electrical grid that you're using right now and that I'm filming, uh, filming uh, flowing through this camera, this Nikon D750, it is the case that there's no such thing as an electron particle. Oliver Heaviside said it. James Clerk Maxwell said it. Charles Proteus Steinmetz said it. One of the most brilliant minds who ever lived, Oliver Heaviside, he basically a quack like Tesla was, but a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant quack. These people that are minds that are in outer space that come up with all these inventions and write math so complicated it'll make your balls drop off. He called it a psychosis. The notion that there was such thing as an electron particle, he called it a psychosis. Now go find me a single electrical engineer in the entire world that will refute the premises and the beliefs of Nikola Tesla, Oliver Heaviside, Charles Proteus Steinmetz, and uh, uh, James Clerk Maxwell. You're not going to do it. There is no hypocrite, no electrical engineering or PhD or professor on earth that is going to step to these people. They don't exist. So now, do you have an open mind to ask yourself, what is the supposed electron particle? Does it exist or is it a figment of the premise of quantum mechanics? That is the case. It is the latter, not the former. Okay? Think about that. Try to have an open mind to check the quotes below that I give you regarding the electron. Because there's no such entity as an electron particle, nor a rest mass of an electron particle. I don't care if you go to Wikipedia and find the supposed weight of an electron. That weight is nothing than the other than the measured electrostatic impulse, force impulse, from the release of, uh, uh, a release of energy. And that release of energy is a, a copper plate, electrostatic plate. It's actually quantified out that the force imparted from the release of that charge, it's calculated then, therefore, that this then, therefore, must be the weight of the electron. There's no such thing as an electron particle. The notion that, like a rain stick, that particles are flowing through AC current lines or uh, through your battery, through your camera, there are little particles that are flowing. Absolute pure bullshit. 
And if you don't have to believe me, just believe the people that it gave you 100% of the world's current electrical grid. Electrical grid. Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, Heaviside. These people all said the same damn thing. So they must be crazy, right? These people that hold thousands of patents. I'm the crazy one? No, they're the crazy ones. They're the ones that said it. They called it a psychosis. They called it an absurdity. And they were effing right. Okay? Open up your mind. Okay? Yes, and Einstein was a moron.